I like it. It's not at all what I was expecting, but I do really like it. You guys know that I, I love a denim jacket. I think I actually even love denim jackets a little bit more than I do jeans. I cleared out, I think, more than half of my collection a few weeks ago. Did a video on it, link up in the corner somewhere. I cleared out about half of those and I still have more than I could ever wear in in a lifetime. And those are just the ones that I had at that time. Over the years, I've owned a lot more. And I think at one time I must have had an example of all the iconic denim jackets in, in one form or another. And by iconic jackets, I mean sort of the icons of the denim jacket. I mean, these days I'd say 90%, 95% of denim jackets that hit the market must be based on, on just a few archetype designs. There's the Levi's one, two, and three. There's the Lee Ryder and there's the Wrangler 124 MJ. That's just five styles. Five styles that dictate, that, that not even dictate, five styles that for whatever reason at the time struck a certain balance of, of style, of utili utili blah, 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 utilitarianism, utility, struck a balance and just tipped over to becoming icons, becoming archetypes. And this means that a brand looking to make a denim jacket either has the easiest time in the world, or if they're dumb, they make their lives very difficult. If they're smart, they're gonna look at whatever style, whatever archetype they're digging the most, and just make their own version of it. They add the odd embellishment here and there, they add some branding, they refine the production or the manufacturing to the nth degree, they do it in a dope denim, whatever it might be. These steps make it their own and these steps make it quite easy to make a very, very good denim jacket. Things become much more difficult when a brand thinks to themselves, okay, I'm gonna do something new, I'm gonna do something unique, I'm gonna do something special. I'm all for innovation and newness, experimentation. I'm all for people trying something different just not in denim. And this isn't because I, I venerate this holy blue fabric or that I hold these designs up in some pedestal. It's because trying to do something new in denim is, is wholly impractical and I really hate impracticality. Denim has been around for a while. The blue jean has been around for a while. The denim jacket's been around for a while. And you can bet whatever anybody can think of has been tried at one time or another in denim. Whatever worked stuck, and whatever didn't work just fall, fell to the wayside. All these iconic designs, the, the, the five pocket blue jean, the, the denim jacket icons, they are a result of product evolution, it's survival of the fittest. And I saw this a lot in the last 10 years. With, this, with the rise in popularity of raw denim, of selvage denim, of quality denim, things started to be made in denim that had no business being made in denim. So, rucksacks, bags, wallets, shoes, belts. Denim is a fine material for all of these things, but if they weren't a thing before the, the selvage denim renaissance, then they're unlikely to be a thing ever. And I witnessed this actually more times than I'd like to have done because I, I knew these people, they were good people trying to do good things for, for a good reason, but they were trying to do something new, they were trying to do something unique or to, to apply denim to, to a new application. They, they, they just fell by the wayside. Brands that took the, the established blueprints, that, that refined that, that built upon that, they were the ones that flourished. But why am I telling you all this? Well, there is a third way. And when it's done right, you get a classic. You don't get an archetype, but you get a classic. I'm talking about shoehorning a couple of icons together into one piece. From taking design cues from, from one or more jacket or jeans or whatever, and combining them into something new. It's a dangerous way, it's an unpredictable way. It can all too easily fall into the I'm trying to do something new category and fall flat in its face. But like I said, if you do it right, then you get a classic. And that's what I thought this was. This is the new jacket design from Benzide Denim Developers. 
This is the BDJ05 trucker jacket. And yeah, I thought it was the third way. I think it is the third way. It probably is the third way, but it's also something else. When I look at this jacket, I see the Lee Rider, but I also see the Levi's trucker. I see the Lee Rider because of these slanted rounded pockets. And I see the Levi's trucker because of these converging seams that run down the front. Certainly the Lee and the Levi's are similar, definitely, but they were different enough to become archetypes in their own right. One didn't win out against the other. So combining the two is definitely not the worst idea. It should work. And actually you can say it definitely does work. But as I said, this is not only that. If you saw my video on the Benzai Blue Flame Denim, you're gonna remember this point. If you didn't, go and check it out. I've left a link to that up in the corner somewhere, but hang around here till you finish this one. It's worth checking out anyway. I wanted to make the point that that these rounded pockets, the shape of these rounded pockets, that makes this a Benzite piece. Benzite has found their thing now. This curve to the pocket is, is absolutely nothing new to the brand. It's been around for a good long time and present in, I think, most of their tops. And that's the, that's the key to this, it's consistency. It's been around long enough, it's been present long enough that I look at that, that specific curve to the pocket and think, ah, oh, Benzite not ah, a mashup between Lee and Levi's. Now, I'll be totally open, totally honest, and pretty blunt about this. I, I heard that, that Lem was doing a, a Benzite trucker a while ago, and the trucker is one of my, my favorite silhouettes for a denim jacket. I just, I really, really love it. So a Benzite trucker was really something I was very, very excited about. Straight out of the box, first impressions, just completely honest with myself and honest with you guys. Would I have preferred this to be just uh, the, the classic with the pointed pockets? Yeah, I probably would. But then it would have just been, yeah, a dope trucker with some nice detailing and a Benzite label on it. Now this is a Benzite trucker and that's much, much cooler. Right, so that's my, my rationale or my, my perception of the rationale behind this jacket. Let's, let's now dive into the details. The first thing you notice is that this is an entirely new block for Benzac. It's cut a little bit in the slimmer side, but I don't find it overly so. And it's also, it's cut a little bit shorter. That's kind of like a, a good, it's a nice, a nice nod of the head, nod of the hat tip of the hat. It's, it's a nice reflection on the fact that this is based on the, on the old school vintage truckers. And there's a couple of, of other details in here we're gonna to get to later that also is a little bit of a nod of the head, tip of the hat to that. And with that loss in length comes a loss in a button. There is five buttons over the, the six buttons that's on all of the other Benzite denim jackets apart from the ones with zips, obviously. Yeah, so there's only five buttons on this one. But it balances out fine. I think that if you try to, to cram another button onto the pocket here, see, I learned a new word. If you tried to cram another button on, then it would just look overly busy. And rolling with that theme of keeping the front of the jacket unbusy, uncluttered, and also to, to tipping the hat, nodding the head, whatever, to the old vintage truckers, there are these two hidden hand warmer pockets here. Having hand warmer pockets on any modern iteration of a denim jacket is, is wholly essential. Y you need hand warmer pockets, they're practical, they're comfortable. I think the only reason they didn't have them back in the day is probably to save on production costs and also the pants were a lot higher back then and the jackets were a lot more cropped. But still, any modern iteration needs to have these pockets just as a, as a practicality. And the practicality of these pockets are also enhanced by the way that they're integrated into the Okay, that's stiff. The way that they're integrated into the jacket here, they've actually got like inner pockets as well, which just, that, that's just a very, very nice detail, a very practical detail to see. Actually, I'm not too sure how practical that is in reality because it's just another place for me to lose my AirPods. The denim is a 15 ounce samphorized raw unwashed denim. It's woven by Collect Mills over in Japan. And this denim was originally produced for, I think it was the first contest that Benzac ever ran. I've seen faded examples of this denim and it's absolutely stunning. Up here, we've got the two classic Benzac chest pockets and they are really, really beautifully done. Like just the detailing here is absolutely lovely. There's a mixture between 
tonal stitching and contrast stitching here. The tonal stitching is indigo dyed stitching that is picking out the bullhorn logo, it's picking out the buttonholes, it's running down the button plaquette here, and it's also running down these two converging lines at the front. The tonal stitching, it's not tonal stitching, sorry, the contrast stitching is this tobacco colored stitching that picks out the pockets, the shoulders, and well, the cuffs, the rest of the stitching on the jacket. It's a, it's a classic and it really works beautifully with this denim. Are there rivets? Hmm, there's no rivets, or maybe I'll find them later. The construction of the jacket is done in Portugal, and as I've come to expect over the last few videos, it's completely clean, it's extremely well done. We're getting a look at the selvage ID from this raw denim here. It's a red line selvage ID. You can see the back of the buttons here, they are stamped the BDD logo. The inside of these inside pockets are lined for extra durability with this, I think that's the, the same ecru cotton that they, they use on their pocket bags for their jeans, so you know that's gonna last. We have the woven labels up here at the collar. What well, first is the, the, the BDD one with size tag, and then we've got another one just telling us that this is a Japanese fabric. Here at the cuffs, we have that stainless steel button closure. We have the chain stitch running rounds. Really nice, really clean. Then here we've got this indigo bar tag. And so there it is. The piece that I feel cements Benzac finding its thing. I am probably reading far too much into this. I, I tend to do that. I'm probably thinking about this, this far too much. At the end of the day, this jacket does exactly what a denim jacket should. It is a, a great jacket with a great silhouette in a great denim with some amazing detailing. That's, that's really enough, and it's actually a lot more than a lot do. But if you're still here, if you're still watching this, then it's a good bet that you're into the nuances of this shit as well. I mean, just reading too much into this, it's pretty good fun, right? So just, just let me know in the comments below what your thoughts are on this iteration of the trucker. Do you see the Levi's in it more? Do you see the Lee in it more? Do you see it as something else? I'd be really curious to know. And when you're on your way down there to just do wax lyrical and the denim details, you're gonna be passing that subscribe button, you're gonna be passing that like button. Guys, if you've liked this video, if you've enjoyed it, if you think you've brought you something, it'd be amazing if you'd give us a thumbs up. If you're into denim, if you're into raw denim, selvage denim, if you're into quality menswear, then consider hitting that subscribe button. Right next to that, there's the bell notification icon. That way you can get notified whenever I drop another video. And that just leaves me to say, guys, as always, I hope everyone is happy and healthy out there. I hope you're taking care of yourselves. I hope you're taking care of each other. And I'm gonna see you in the next video.